Welcome back to Joystick Justice League to part two of episode one of my new show, JJO Live, which is essentially the, like I was saying in, in part one, essentially the new direction of the, of the network going forward. I mean, I want to take this back. Now that I'm on my own doing this purely solo, I want to take it back to my roots of when I was doing campus radio, just me, a microphone, just kind of talking to myself and uh, my virtual audience. So this is bare bones. I may be adding video to these segments eventually if I have time, but right now at least I want to make this more audio friendly so it can be enjoyed on, on podcasts everywhere. So the last uh, 40 minutes of this show, 40, 45 minutes, is going to be dedicated to Nintendo news, Sony news, Microsoft news, and then finally third party PC mobile and everything else because this is really a console friendly show. Not to say I'll never talk about mobile or PC, but the focus will always be consoles and if there's a PC version, I'll mention it, or if there's really something heavy hitting on PC, I'll likely talk about it, but I'm more of a console gamer myself, so I'm gonna talk about what I know. So let's start with Nintendo. We're gonna do about 10 minutes of Nintendo news and there's a lot of news. Um, two major things. First of all, if you've been reading the financial reports, Nintendo's actually up, okay? So they've actually posted a profit, which is awesome for them. The only catch is that sales are down, but as I kind of go over what's been happening to Nintendo over the last month or so, you'll kind of understand why their profits are up, sales are down, but why this is it's a good thing for them in the short term. Not so sure about the long term, but this will get them to the holiday season and probably most of next year. So. Nintendo Direct happened on November 5th, and that really was, even though it wasn't really exciting in terms of revealing new IPs, I mean, there we, we got to see more of Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, we finally got to see a little bit more of Xenogears, Chronicle X, and um, Kirby, and a few other things, but overall, Nintendo Direct on November 5th was more about outlining Nintendo's strategy going forward for the next 6 to 12 months, and it's essentially a more dialed back working with what we've got kind of approach, which I think is smart because it's it's less risky in the short term, can help them possibly incrementally build a new audience and maybe push Xbox One, which is ailing right now, right into the tertiary, making it like the, the turbo graphics to the Super Nintendo of PS4 and the Genesis of Wii U. I don't know if it could end up being that way. I think it's gonna be more of a close race but we'll, we'll see, we'll get into Xbox news later, but let's focus on Nintendo right now. So, what is Nintendo doing right? Let's always start with the sweet side to the sour. Let's start with the sweet here, and what is, is Nintendo doing right right now? So first of all, it sold 1.1 million consoles over the last six, compared to 460,000 the same time last year. Uh, time reports, in terms of actual dollars, $224 million profit versus a $75 million loss. This, la this time last year. So that's that's sick. Shareholders are happy, especially that Satoru Iwata, who was fighting a tumor, actually managed to recover and came back, although a little frail, came back to give the Nintendo Direct himself, which was pretty awesome to see. So sales are good, and that's been spurred pretty much by Mario Kart. I mean, 47% attach rate. You know, it's, it's I'm not giving you a lot of breaking news here. It's a bit, again, it's been a while since I've recorded, but these things need to be addressed, because we need to understand what, what Nintendo's trying to do from every aspect. So Mario Kart, huge attach rate. Hyrule Warriors, a surprise, uh, at least not a, not a critical surprise. I mean, it, got, it did okay review-wise, but commercially, it's been on the charts. Like, it, it, like, when Destiny was dominating the charts during September, Hyrule Warriors was right up there too. Like, it was selling better than I think uh, people expected because that's the thing. Wii U owners are starved for exclusives. You could put anything with a reskin right now, and I think most Wii U owners would gobble it up. I mean, I'm not trying to detract from Hyrule Warriors. I'm sure it's a fun game. It's just not a Zelda game. So, but you know, it's still good. Bayonetta 2 defied the odds. Critical darling. I don't know. It's it's doing okay commercially, but I think word of mouth is going to really push that game. And and again, it just it just shows that. Yeah, Nintendo may not be putting out as many games as as Xbox is and as Sony, or at least what they're promising to put out. But they're just putting out less and making it more. So they're 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 kind of like they're they're scaling down their efforts 
and and kind of and I would say slow cooking their games like just making sure that they maximize everything and that's really the reason and also with the weak yen and kind of inflating overseas sales but the reason why profits up or sales are down because now they're not spending as many development dollars on developing all these new IPs but rather don't just taking all those resources and fine focusing them on each of these flagship titles to ensure that they're going to be at least an 80 minute critic score and are going to go out but also that they have long term attachment. I mean Iwata was basically saying that their philosophy going forward is to say okay you finish Mario Kart there's still more content for you to enjoy. We, we can extend that replay replayability of that one title to make it iconic and legendary rather than something like Destiny which I fear is already becoming a flavor of the month which is kind of sad to see that and we'll get into this later too the fact that like a game a big game like Destiny is already calling for a sequel um, because of just lackluster perception you're just not seeing that with Nintendo right now so for the short term it's great and of course you've got Smash Brothers to carry Nintendo sailing through Christmas. I mean, Smash Bros. is gonna be ridiculous, especially now that they've given that game-changing reason for people to buy it. Because when the 3DS version came out and, and people gobbled it up, all of a sudden, people were starting to say, well, you know, are they still, people still gonna get that Wii U version? Are they gonna, you know, are they gonna double dip? And then finally, Nintendo announces eight-player competitive Smash Brothers. Like, game changer right there. Like, they, they, they've, they've gotten better at taking small little announcements and inflating them. And that and, and that's a good tactic for the short term. But like I said a few months ago on a round table when we were when Joe and I were talking about um, the post E3 re, our post E3 reactions to Nintendo and feeling that all the hype was a little inflated, I think with the lack of third party support, Nintendo will do okay overall, but with sales being down it's going to be really hard for them to hit that bank like they hit in the Wii days. I mean, it's going to take another generation for them to recover. And because now the PS4 and the Xbox One are starting to hit their stride, and PC gaming, which is the next level, is already becoming more affordable by the, by the day, I don't know how much longer Wii U can ride this piggybacking wave they're on where it's like, okay, now we're going to put out DLC for Mario Kart. Now, for the first time ever, you're going to see a DLC for Mario Gamer. Now, we're going to send sell Amiibo toys at $13 a pop just so you can have a new skin or like in your, in your Mario Kart or like a new weapon in Hyrule Warriors. At some point, the parents are going to draw the line. You know, they, they, you've got Skylanders, which is which is already omnipresent, and now you've got the the new what's it, the tra um, trap team or something like that. Skylanders is already huge. Parents have already invested hundreds of dollars into not only that, but now Disney Infinity 2.0, which is selling really well, and that's starting to sell figures. Our parents and kids who have no money at all, and the parents that already have limited funds, are they going to shell out for now a third line? of NFC toys just because they add a little perk to a game and like try being a kid and explaining to your dad it's like oh I want to buy a $13 Zelda doll that adds a sword into Hyrule Warriors I'm going to use for 10 minutes I I, I don't know man I, I, I don't think this is the right approach I think they're going to get lost in this whole kind of this move to toys maybe I'm going to be wrong maybe maybe it'll sell like hotcakes maybe parents will find that extra dollar they can use to spend towards these toys but you know, you're already starting to see the backlash towards microtransactions and DLC and seasons passes in general. Like, it's getting greedy. It's get it's getting abused in many cases. Like, look at uh, the the controversy right now with Assassin's Creed Unity and having to, I, I think it was like buy an app or something to unlock content in the game and. You know, just just the fact that you have to pay sixty dollars alone in this tight economy for a game. Now it's it, it, any game, any game out there. If you want to get the complete experience, it goes upwards to like a hundred, hundred and twenty dollars, and that's a lot to ask of people. So wow, like that's ten minutes already. So this is you know I may have to give Nintendo. A, I'm gonna go an extra five minutes with this segment because Nintendo deserves a little bit more time. We're gonna extend this segment to fifteen minutes. We're gonna keep going for a few more minutes here. Um. It's, it's really time to just bite the bullet and to announce the next gen handheld. I think they've done so well with the 3DS and I think that with all the great games that are still coming out for it, like the recently announced, uh, what was the, um, this, this fantastic codename 
Steam, which is going to be from the makers of Fire Emblem and Advance Wars, which is going to be kind of like this XCOM-like uh, turn-based strategy, which looks fantastic. And, and you've got uh, already this fantastic library of 3DS. I think around E3 is the time to announce a next-gen handheld. And that's going to do... Uh, it's. I want, I, want to, I want to figure out where I want to go over the last five minutes here. This is about as real as it gets, folks, in terms of how I'm going to do the news. I may stutter once in a while, but um, before I move on to the next-gen Halo, let's get back to this in the last few minutes. Let's, let's finish this off. So Nintendo's piggybacking. They're taking a slower approach. It's working the short term. My fear, the last thing I want to say about this, my fear is that as the PS4 and Xbox One hit their stride in 2015 and 16 and beyond, the Wii U is going to age badly. Okay, already we're seeing early footage of Uncharted 4. It's ridiculous, all right? Halo 5 is most likely by the time it's ready going to be ridiculous, all right? Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain, Arkham Knight, Mortal Kombat X, none of these games, some of them exclusive, some of them not exclusive, but none are showing up on the Wii U. That is troubling to me because what do Wii U owners have to look forward to next year? They got Zelda. That's huge, but Captain Toad. That's not huge. It's good. It looks amazing. It's not huge. And 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 uh, what's it? The the uh, the, the Kirby game. Um, what's it called? I wrote it down here. Uh, Kirby, Kirby, Kirby. Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Yeah, not bad. You know, cute. Pretty good, but not a huge year. Like, not a lot. I'm, I'm hoping we'll see a big announcement around January, February, but this is why I want to use the last few minutes to talk about what I think they need to do. And I think next summer, they need to start announcing that next-gen handhold. And, and if I were in charge of things, here's where I would give you some advice, Nintendo, of what you should be doing. First of all, you need something that looks as good, if not better, than what the Vita can do natively, okay? The, native, the Vita can do almost PS3 level. If you can make something that has like almost like Wii U level graphics on a handheld, but better, like it's gotta be better. Just slightly better. And it's gotta be, you've gotta be able to take that handheld and beam it to your TV so you can stream that stuff on Twitch. So that's one thing I would do. I would definitely make it connect to your TV, but also built-in streaming. I think Nintendo's gotta change its focus on streaming. I think it's one of the greatest ways to find out about video games. And again, in this era of like, going back to Gamergate, of suspect ethics and transparency, and, and already, like even, it's, it, it happens every day. Like look what happened with Shadow of Mordor. That game was great, but you know, anybody who's promoting it had a certain set of rules of how to promote it, and it's just, it just, it's not transparent. So what Twitch does is it, increases that focus on transparency. It, it, it allows early adopters to, to show off the game, whether they like it or not, and for people to judge for themselves, to watch an extended play session to see, like, is this a game I wanna play? I think Nintendo would only benefit themselves, not only by putting streaming into like a next generation, next gen portable or next gen hardware, but start with this one. Start getting the Wii U, put a Twitch app on the Wii U, seriously. Figure out some way to get Nintendo or to, to get Nintendo players onto Twitch, onto Ustream, promoting your games, and that's what's really going to build up that loyal fan base that's going to take you into the next generation whenever that starts for them. So I I'm hoping to see good things. I really do, but like I said before, to kind of finish off for the last minute here of the Nintendo segment, I think management's got to shake up. I they they need they need some new blood in Nintendo. A new type of visionary. I I respect Iwata. I respect Fiza Made to a certain degree. They've done certain things right, but they've done a lot of things wrong. And in terms of Reggie Fiza Made, he really needs to kind of wake up and realize that Nintendo's not king of the hill anymore. When he says outlandish things that like that sound outlandish, maybe not. That'll sound outlandish later. Like when he says that the PS4 and the Xbox One are are, are identical and have no franchises that could be ever as, as iconic as the Nintendo. He, he's talking corporate puffery. Okay, it's just it's not. It, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, the the PS4 and the Xbox One are in the first year of their life cycles. But wait, just wait until the next couple of years when they do hit their stride and leave the Wii U in the dust. Y you gotta start showing some signs of, uh, like, Reggie, you, like, your head's in the clouds, man. You, you really need to understand that stream is a good thing, 
the competition is is out circling you right now and you're getting lucky and and it's really just time to start making peace with the third parties and, and just try to get some unique experiences outside of your own tentpole so wow that's nintendo 10 minutes 15 minutes actually we went to we're gonna stay stay tuned for the uh, very nervous but uh you know long awaited at least by myself episode of uh the first episode of jjl live this has been part two part three is coming up next running down sony news what they've been doing right what they've been doing wrong i'm mike frusios for the joystick justice league stay tuned we'll be back after this